just just one of those weeks in refin. The tank was crashing on Sunday and it was all because of my mistakes. You've guessed it. Let's roll those titles. Just one of those weeks in reefing, we all have them, mine came this week. So on Sunday I was in an absolute flap because my little Red Sea Max Nano was in an absolute crisis. The tank was crashing right behind me and I was worried about everything that I'd invested in terms of time and money into this tank. So. I start off with the Red Sea Max Nano because it's a great beginner tank, it's got a hang in the back sump and it's a nice small tank to start with. However, with these little Red Sea Max Nanos, as you know, keeping them stable is a real challenge. And that's where I slipped up. So, if I take you back three weeks, uh, in three weeks ago I added uh, my tail spot blenny, my little tail spot blenny fish, and I also added ambitiously four new SPS corals, some millipora, some acropora, and a millipora digitata. So four new corals and one new fish, all within the space of a week. Now, there is mistake number one. Not so much the SBS, but just adding so many corals and a new fish at one go. Obviously you're going to change the stability of the parameters, the uptake of the nitrates, the uptake of the alkalinity, and there was lies my first problem. So if you've got one of these little nanos, yeah, patience. I say this on some of my videos previously, but patience. Add one thing at a time, maybe one or two things maximum per month, because you are going to change the, the chemistry of the tank and that can also cause an imbalance. So I was going down the road of adding my first SPS, so then I learned all about SPS. You need to increase the flow. So mistake number two, I changed the direction of the flow and I increased the flow, changing again the balance of the ecosystem with inside the tank. So that was my second change. Moving the power head also disturbed the sand bed, which again released um, nitrates from the, from the sand bed and again changing the chemistry of the tank. What also did I do? I got a new SPS setting on the Radian. So I, from my Radian uh, XR15 Blue, SPS light different lighting. So what did I do? I changed everything that I had and I changed the setting on my Radian to AB plus. So I changed the lighting, the intensity of the lighting went up and that also changed the chemistry of the tank. So I was in a bit of a bad way because also because I added my uh, four fish I increased the feeding. Um, so I was feeding, there you go, one of these, so I, I feed marine feast, I think most of you feed a bit of frozen, uh, and I was feeding a cube per day. Now, uh, again, another rule, don't overfeed the fish because you're going to cause problems, and I was feeding one cube. I went from feeding um, a third of a cube to feeding a whole cube per day. So again, another change in the tank. So I changed the flow, I changed the lighting, I changed the feeding, I changed the bio load, and guess what? The parameters also changed. Let's take a look at what the parameters were over the last couple of weeks. To take a look at the nitrate and the phosphate measurement, which are the main two nutrients in the tank, these are the ones you should always be monitoring closely in your reef tanks. Mine went from 2 ppm nitrates down to 0 0.23. Yeah, really not good. So over a two to three week period, the nutrients were stripping out of this little Red Sea Max Nano. Without nutrients, you've got no food for corals, no food for fish, and no food for the cleanup crew. Now, if you follow the Jay's Real Reef on Instagram, you will know that Saturday, just gone, was a really sad day in the journey where we lost one of our cleanup crew. We lost our blood red shrimp. Now I can't say for sure that that was due to the lack of nutrients. I can't say that for sure. I don't know the age of the blood red shrimp before I put it in. It might have been a year or two old to start with. Um, but on the Saturday evening it didn't look the best. It stopped feeding despite me trying to spot feed it as well. And then on Sunday morning I woke up to find uh, that it had passed away. Now you know if you watch Jay's Real Down on the Reef, Jay's Real Reef and Down on the Reef, that I've got a pair of blood red shrimps and they get on so well 
and it, I have noticed actually, and it's a bit of a sad one, that my other blood red shrimp is really upset about its loss. Now I don't know if I can add another blood red shrimp, not to replace the other one because you can never replace them, but I think the uh, the one that's left does need a friend. So let me know if you can add a blood red shrimp after, uh, you know. The other ones were paired together in the shop and they were in the tank and I bought them both at the same time. Uh, if I buy them separately, are they going to conflict? I don't know, but anyway, if you can let me know in the comments, am I able to add another blood red shrimp, uh, please do to so. And I am dedicating this video to my lost blood red shrimp. Um, so please give it a thumbs up to show the appreciation uh, for the channel, but also to remember that little guy. He was really cool and uh, I'm so sad that he has gone. Now, let me show you what the tank looked like on Sunday when the problems peaked. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look great. Let's take a look. Can you see it there? It's just around the edge of the rock work. Um, so basically, there's the Duncan, fully annoyed. Uh, the snails have got these kind of like stringy stuff off of them. Um, all the torches are pretty closed up. The SPS is just well unhappy. Here's the torches there, they're fully closed up pretty much. Not looking good. You've got it kind of stringing off the zoas that snail is covered in this like stringy stringy stuff on the back of its shell and then there's a little bit there at the back of that lithophyllin coral so I don't know what the hell is going on um, it just doesn't look good so this is what I'm, I've noticed lads so on the back of the snail there you can see all that kind of white stringy stuff so now we're under the white, it's a bit around the zoas, at the top of the zoas there, look. It's like white stringy. All the corals just like, I mean this SPS is just bleached out. Um, you can see it on this snail really well. Then you can see it on the edges of the rock there as well. You can see it on there. And it's a bit around there and obviously, well the NEM's not been out all day today by the looks of it, it's just stayed in there. So something's not right. You can see it on the rocks there, look. Um, this is obviously under full whites. Right, hopefully you can help me out, gents. Thanks. Now you know how much time we put into these reef tanks and how much money we put into it. Now I know mine's only halfway for its journey, but there's well over a thousand pound of corals and livestock in there and I was not willing to let it go. So the reason why there was no video last weekend and I do apologize was I was in rescue mode here because my phosphates were almost zero and that is not good. You're asking for dinos if you're on zero phosphate. So you gotta be really careful. Avoid zero phosphate at all costs. And my nitrates, now I know you're gonna do, you're all gonna blooming comment and laugh, but this nitrate checker, <laughs> has actually helped me out here because it avoided my crash of nitrates. Uh, I was registering 0 0.2 ppm of nitrates and this has a tolerance of 0 0.07 so it could have been as low as 0 0.13 ppm of nitrates so my nitrates were really low and on Sunday night my head and I'm not joking was falling off okay the, you've seen the pictures of what the tank looked like it looks nothing like it normally does uh, and I called a bit of a crisis meeting and my top tip for reefers any reefers out there is don't do this hobby alone it's challenging enough as it is we're all going to have bad weeks make sure you've got a group of reefers that you're in touch with that you can share you can chat you can ask questions to so we called a cobra meeting on sunday night a tank uh, doing large water changes and back down to 10 percent water changes not 30% water changes because uh, I thought that SPS needed clean water I'm trying to cater for the SPS high flow clean water clean tank and I was upsetting everything else so again it goes back to that conversation about a mixed reef with a mixed reef they're the hardest reefs to run because you're trying to please everything you're trying to please your softies your LPS your SPS I was trying to cater for my SPS and in that way running too clean a tank and I was upsetting everything else so that yeah don't do that um, so what else did they tell me to do they told me to put my filtration back in but leave it for a little, a little bit longer and then two, uh, two or three other things that I've been doing so I think this is probably one of the key things behind 
uh, the recovery of the tank. My tank was lacking biodiversity. So if you saw my Instagram, I introduced live food. So I put in some brine shrimp and I put in a load of copepods to increase the biodiversity and the, the kind of nutrient load. I've been dosing four mil. Uh, which seems quite a lot of phyto again to increase biodiversity to increase nutrients and this stuff has really helped to elevate that nitrate levels uh, much higher so that has been brilliant so i've been putting that in four mil a day uh, just to elevate the nitrates and increase the biodiversity uh, again because i've got low nutrients i've been putting ab plus in uh, only two mil a day but putting a bit of ab plus in because the water was, uh, doesn't have much nutrients in it. The, this will get its uh, amino acids and nutrients from the AB plus, so I did that as well. And as you can tell by the videos, I had the development of hair algae on the rocks. And for the first time, I've gone to this product, uh, Vibrant, which I know many of you reefers use. Uh, and wow, this is seriously good stuff for getting rid of any problem algae. Um, I used one mil. Uh, of this uh, you can use up to two mil but I use one mil for my tank poured it in the sump and um, that has helped clear up the air algae as well in the tank so I've dosed that one mil per week well, that's what I'm going to do now just to keep the aquarium looking clean awesome little product I know most of you use that and also the other products so now let's have a little look at the where the parameters are on the Red Sea Max Nano post our little recovery so these are my current nutrient levels. So nitrate is now back up to 1.02 ppm. I'm slowly elevating it back to 2.3 where it seems to be healthy and phosphates are at 0.04. So much, much better. And here is what the tank looks like yesterday. Corals, much happier. So this little Red Sea Max Nano is getting back on track and hopefully getting back to its peak that it was a few weeks ago. I am going to put out a Down on the Reef special, we haven't done one of those for a while, uh, to muse it but we'll put one out uh, very soon and you'll be able to see what the tank looks like today with the corals and what's happening in terms of life inside the tank. Don't miss it, uh, subscribe to the channel and follow the journey inside this tank uh, by watching Down on the Reef. But I didn't fix this problem through a water change. Now most problems in reef tanks are fixed through water changes, but I didn't want to do a water change because obviously the few nitrates and phosphates that were left, I didn't want to strip those out. So the water's pretty dirty, the glass is pretty dirty, the power head's a little bit dirty, uh, the filters haven't been changed as much, and we've got our new army of live feeding copepods, brine shrimp, phytoplankton, AB+, and Tackling the Albi is uh, vibrant. So uh, things are looking good and that's what's helped me turn it around and avoid the crash. Touch wood. I know with this hobby there's going to be future issues with tanks. It's just one of those things. We all go through those roller coasters of problems and issues. And yeah, it, it is, it's a challenging hobby. Remember we've got living coral reefs in our homes. It shouldn't be possible to even do it, and we are doing it, uh, you know, brilliantly. But we obviously all have our issues. But don't be alone. Speak to people, share videos, share photos, because people have been through it before. And um, I could have avoided most of the things that I've done here. Too many changes, too quickly, just sent the tank into a bit of a spiral. But I managed to rescue it just in time because I was testing. If I hadn't tested for another couple of days, then this tank would for sure have crashed and I would have lost everything. So just keep up with your testing routine. Right. This Friday's live stream is over on Mogs' Aquarium. It's me, uh, it's Fish Palace, it's Paul from Fish Palace, it's the Bearded Reef and Mogsy Aquarium. All meet up on a, on a Friday night. There's about 60 uh, reefers that join the chat. We have a great time, a bit of a laugh, we have a beer, we talk all about reefing and some of the problems. And I've got loads probably to talk about tomorrow night. So join us on Mogs' Aquarium channel the link in the description below. So go down to it right now, click on Mogs' Aquarium, set the reminder. You're already too late to be first because we've already got a first in there and Gao Gao has let us down this week. He's not first. Uh, he's been beaten to the post. But join us tomorrow night. We're going to have some reefing chat and share our issues and problems and experiences and advice. And it's a great place to be on a Friday night. 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Don't miss it. Mogs' Aquarium channel. One guy that always joins us on the live stream uh, uh, is our 
Reef King. Big shout out to Reef King who sent me his uh, quality sticker. I do love this logo sticker, it's one of my favourites, but yeah, if you don't follow the Reef King, you must. Head over to his YouTube channel as well, link in the description, go right now, click on it, Reef King, join, subscribe, you can even join his son's uh, YouTube channel as well, and Instagram. Uh, he's just started a brand new journey with a beautiful ND Peninsula tank, he's just filled it up with water and corals, and it's going to be an SPS dominant tank, so watch that journey. Uh, we're all sharing our journeys on Instagram, and uh, this, this guy is certainly one to follow, Instagram and YouTube. I also want to say, just to finish off, and I, it feels so difficult because we have hit 1,000 subscribers to Jay's Real Reef UK, and I've been so busy flapping about trying to fix my tank and also trying to avoid this crisis that I've not mentioned it once uh, on on my Instagram or on my YouTube channel. But I am going to give a giveaway, and I'll run that through Instagram and YouTube. So there is going to be a giveaway for some corals. So be in touch. Uh, but also, I just want to say genuinely, I started out this journey with my boy enjoying the reef tank, learning about the coral reef. We just wanted to document our journey and we never thought for one second we'd get 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to every single person, genuinely from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for subscribing, for commenting, for liking, for having a laugh, for enjoying life and uh, yeah, and being in touch. It's absolutely brilliant and hopefully uh, I can see some of you a bit more tomorrow night on the live stream. But I'm going to leave it there. You've heard all about the, uh, the issues that I've had. Reefing is blooming difficult and if you've got SPS it's even more difficult. But let's just ride ride the journey and uh, I'd just like to show you everything that's happening with the tank, the good and the bad and it's been pretty bad this week. But for now, you guys and girls take care.